Hello YouTubers. Today we're going to show you the Build Your Own Custom Trailer Axle Kit available on eBay. Now here's all the parts that you'll be getting with your kit and to give you a little description you'll get two sets of gussets, two mounting plates, eight total hardened mounting bolts, and two sealed bearings. Now these sealed bearings you never have to grease them, you never have to take them apart, there's nothing you do with them. You'll get about 150,000 miles on these before they'll wear out, and that's with quite heavy use. Typically, if you're running your trailer just now and again, you would probably never have to replace one of these. But in the event that you do, it's basically just four mounting bolts, very easy. There's an OEM part number that is etched in the face. You might want to record this before you assemble your trailer. That way you can go to just about any auto parts store and get an easy replacement for these. Only takes you about 10 minutes to replace one of these, so if you have to do it on the road, it's a snap. Do it in your shop, takes 10 minutes, whether it's on the road or on the sh in your shop, no problem. Those are very durable. You'll also get a manual to show you how to assemble this and weld it on your trailer. And that's basically what's covered pretty well in this video also. So whether you watch the video or you go by the included manual to show you how to put this set together, you should have your custom width trailer axle in no time. Now this set, you can use either a two inch square axle or a two inch round axle. Either one is just as compatible with this. And you can also mount this in a center straight axle configuration or a drop axle, a two inch drop axle, which would give you a little lower deck. So there's many ways that you can achieve that uh, by your spring mounting, but basically uh, we're gonna go through that and show you basically how to put this uh, kit together uh, so you have a successful custom width trailer axle. Now for this sequence, you're going to need two of the gussets, one of the plates, one of the bearings, a little longer piece of 2x2 two two stock, and a little shorter piece. A tape measure, two 4 inch clamps, heavy clamps, and a larger 8 inch, 6 inch clamp that's uh, very sturdy. You're going to need two mounting bolts and two lug nuts that you're going to be using later in your assembly. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to prepare these pieces for tack welding and eventual welding. So the first thing we need to do is go over and use our four inch grinder, hand grinder, and we're going to grind one eighth of an inch angle off of each of these edges and then just a little on each end. We're going to do that both sides for all four pieces of the conduits or the uh, gussets and then we're also going to do the same for the face plate. We're going to grind these channels on both sides and in these inside edges too so that uh, we get a nice deep weld when we put, put them together. So let's go do that. So as you can see, we've ground all the way around the perimeter of the gusset ends here. Now it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect, but you want to try to get a about an eighth of an inch grind all the way around on all of those edges. Now the, this gusset plate will only stick through three-eighths of an inch into the face plate, so you only need to come down about three-eighths of an inch on each end and, or each side and end. Now next we're going to do the face plate grooves there. Okay, as you see, we've ground a bevel all the way around all of these points and at the top to allow that weld to, to seep down into the metals to fuse them together on both sides. Okay, back at the welding table. Uh, we're going to need a can, so make sure you have beans for lunch today. 
Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to make four shims, about uh, two inches long. So that's about the right thickness. If you can find something around your shop that uh, might be about the same thickness, that's fine. Uh, maybe some heating, cooling, sheeting if it's uh, pretty thin like a can. Uh, and the, sh the point of the shims is to, when we uh, weld this together, uh, welding has a tendency to pull metals and we don't want the end product to be so tight we can't fit it on the axle when we're done. So these shims will help prevent that. Okay, the next thing we want to do is put the gussets in the faceplate. The best way to do that is lay your faceplate flat down on the uh, table. Put your gussets in, in between the end of the slots. Make sure they're lined up with uh, either the top end or the bottom end. It doesn't quite matter as long as you do both sides of your axle the same. Uh, put your shims in between the spacer and then put a clamp on this side and a clamp on this side low down to pull them up against the um, spacer here. What you don't want to do is put a clamp up here uh, because it'll actually pull these these bottoms outward and you want to make sure those bottoms are pulled inward because you want a nice square here and you want to end up with it being square to the face plate so make sure you use a little square there to check your setup before you get ready to tack these. Uh, clamping it down to the table, make sure that nothing moves. Make sure that your gussets are all the way down into your faceplate and touching the table. So what we're going to do is we're going to tack just the outside of these corners on all four sides. Okay, after tacking those four corners all the way around, good. Uh, we're going to remove it from the table, but we won't take these two clamps off. So what we're going to do now is we're going to weld the face plate. So we we'll only want to weld down here about three quarters of the way. If you go a little farther, it's not going to hurt anything. You'll just have to grind it off so that the bearing sits flat against the face again. Uh, in fact, I would even recommend that you weld it all the way around because that gives a good weld. You can always grind a little bit off. It's not that hard. So let's do that next. So, and after we do that, we're going to want to let this cool, air cool. Don't water cool it. Uh, don't cool it with your air hose. Just let it naturally cool a little bit because uh, when we take this apart and do the final welding, we don't want any warpage to take place, in, uh, especially if you dip it in water. You don't want to do that because you can actually warp it, and that's, uh, that's going to destroy them. So, Let's go ahead and weld those, and uh, we'll proceed from there. Okay, I let it cool, and uh, knock the slag off it, and uh, I chose to weld it all the way around, so I ground off a little bit to make it flat again where the bearing is going to attach. Uh, next, we're going to want to flip it on its face again, and remove both of these clamps. And we're going to put this one back low down here. And now what we're going to weld is we're going to weld these uh, just on the outside on both sides, the total length, these four places. Now before I weld this, I set everything on a couple of strips of metal to get it up off the table. Uh, now this isn't so much important with the tape, type of table I have, but if you have a metal table, it's going to draw the heat out of that uh, weld. So you want to make sure that this is keeping nice and hot. Uh, so by elevating it, uh, you'll help it uh, maintain a good weld. See that we have two good heavy welds, heavy hot welds, uh, just along those basically one inch spots there. 
and we kind of wrapped them around the corner a little bit. Uh, careful not to weld right into the spacer piece there. Also, this is a good time to set up your dry fit again so that you can get the length of your axle. Um, just a matter of clamping the already weldment that you put together uh, to your axle. And what you want to do is you want to line up your piece to the inside of the gusset flush uh, because that's the way it'll end up when you finish uh, welding it to your axle. What we have now is uh, this is basically the outside of your um, trailer frame. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the outside of your trailer frame to the inside of the gusset. Now in our case we have three inches. So our spring is going to be mounted right in the center of your axle. So your axle spring hole will be three and one or th four inches because you have a two inch frame or in your case whatever it is and we're going to put that spring right in the center of that. So we'll end up with our spring basically sitting like that right below your frame so it's centered on the frame. This is another time that you can take some preliminary measurements to see if you want to mount in the drop axle configuration like we have here, that's what we're doing today, or in the center mount, and we'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Um, you can also determine the height of the ground to your axle, and by placing your spring where you mount it either on the top or on the bottom, you can determine your bed height too that way. And of course that's relative to your tire size. So in our case, what we've done is we've measured three inches to the edge of our frame, then one more inch in to show where our spring mount hole is going to be. And we're going to drill a 5 8 hole in there, and that will account for the nut that is either on the bottom or if you're mounting underneath, it'll account for the rivet on the top, or the top of the head of the bolt there. There's one other thing I'd like to show you that's important, is also during the assembly or pre-welding that we were doing, um, you might have noticed, or you do notice, or you do know, that there is a seam in a two-inch square pipe. Now, a round pipe typically doesn't have a seam, so you don't need to worry about that, but you always want to, while we're tacking or welding, we'll always want to, if we're using a spacer, such as what we did, you'll want to put that seam down. The reason is, is because there's a slight little, sometimes a bit of a concave in here, and if you lay this on its side, it may, uh, it may affect the welding as far as uh, being off or a little out of square. Now also, for uh, the sake of aesthetics, on all your trailer frame and your axle, put the put the seam down because when you paint it, if that seam is up or the side, you'll see that seam right down the side of your trailer. And it's just uh, uh, there's no strength difference. Uh, it doesn't make any difference as far as how you put it for strength, but for um, aesthetic view and after painting, it looks much nicer if that seam is kind of hidden to the bottom. So let's go cut the hole. Okay, we've got the spring mount hole drilled. Now in this case I drilled a three quarter inch just to give me a little play, a little adjustment room, it doesn't matter too much, but five eighths to three quarter is good. Uh, another thing you don't want to do while you've got your axle loose is grind all the way around the outside edge of this. Put a nice bevel on it to take the burr off and also that'll aid in welding when we put it together. Okay, now we're gonna show you how to weld this hole weldment right onto your axle. We've got our spring mount hole completed. One thing that I should remind you about that on the bottom side when you're setting this down to get ready to uh, clamp it, on the bottom side you want to make sure this is nice and flat. You might have a little bit of uh, weld build up there. Make sure it's nice and flat so you get a good flat surface 
to, th uh, this to sit on. What you'll want to do is you'll want to line up the inside of the gussets to the end of the axle. And of course you want to make sure that it's square. And also you want to make sure that this groove, this notch is up always. Now this is a center mount position. I have a two inch spacer underneath and I'm supporting the other end of the axle with another two inch piece to make sure it's level. Making sure my table or my flat surface is nice and clean so that I get a nice straight weld onto this. Okay, we want to check it for square, of course. We want to square to the face and flush with the gusset on the end of the axle. So, clamp this on just slightly here. Make a little of adjustment to make sure it's square. Tighten it down good. Now, what you'll want to do at this point is you'll want to weld on the inside of this seam on both sides, flip it over, weld those same seams again, weld through the face hole here and weld down that seam on both sides. And then what you'll want to also do is weld the inside of these two spots on both sides top and bottom and finish off any other welds on top and bottom that you may want. You'll also want to weld down the outside where the gusset meets the axle too. Anywhere where the where the metals meet you want to make sure you make a good hot weld. Now in our case today we're going to go with the drop axle configuration. So I have removed the two inch spacer I had underneath, set that aside, removed the other on the other end, it is now sitting flat on the table, the table's clean and dry and flat, and I've clamped my axle to my table to make sure that it doesn't move. I've positioned the end of the axle to the inside edge of the gusset here. It's the same whether you go center, mount or whether you go drop mount, you'll always line that up the same way to get your correct measurement. I've squared up the face to make sure that we're straight up and down. At this point you can put a little camber in it if you'd like. Uh, that's the point, uh, this is the point where you would do that. Um, camber does help in heavy situations. It's totally up to your research what you do from there. So now we're ready to spot and weld all the rest of these uh, joints together. And everywhere where the metal meets the gusset, both uh, outside and inside, and then your inside joints here, you'll want to weld all those. And coming through the hole here, you can weld also the gusset and uh, axle together on this inside uh, spot too. So everywhere where that metal meets gussets is where you're going to want to weld. So let's do that now. Okay, you can see that we've welded everywhere that we can weld, wherever there's a joint. We've put a nice heavy fillet weld on all the joints, uh, both inside and outside, and every conceivable place where those all attach. So she's pretty welded there, and you can tell by the, the bluing in the metal there that we got a good hot uh, weld that penetrated well into both pieces. Um, and that's the key to getting these uh, exactly square. So the idea here now is to do the other end and we'll have a complete axle. Well looky there you did it. Isn't that a beautiful looking axle? Let's take a little closer look at that. Got all our welds complete all the way around and all we have to do is paint it, put the bearing on the end and we are set 
We're ready for business. Thanks for watching.